Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew in Price here with another Minecraft video. And today's video is going to be a little bit different. Today, we're taking on a challenger. Well, he doesn't know he's being, he challenged me, but he did. So, uh, let's get to that. So, recently I posted a video that uh, was supposed to go over, essentially, uh, my enchanting room design. And this is the updated version of it, uh, speaking of which. But we're not going to worry, worry about that today, because um, I got a comment from a fellow YouTuber by the name of MC John V one who, from for the rest of the video, I'm just going to refer to as John, because it's easier. And he says, I made a system for the new enchanting system that is like 1 20th the size of that. And it has many other cool functions. So, dot, dot, dot. So, John, you think you can outdo me, huh? Well, I am here to respond to this uh, infidel, as it were. This a uh, challenger, this upsert. Upsert. There we go. Upstart? Yeah, I think it's upstart. Anyways, so... Basically, I watched uh, John's video, and I have to say, it's not a bad design, or n at least not terrible. I'm I'm not going to, like, try to say, oh, yeah, you're a terrible redstoner. No, I mean, he does a decent job. Basically, this is the uh, setup that he's using, and it's using these pulse shorteners right here to send a short pulse to these pistons, which then go down and leave the books. And then he's using another circuit very similar to something like this to pick up the books when you're ready. Now, this is a very easy system to build. Uh, in fact, it's probably the easiest system you could build because, I mean, here's all there is to it. Uh, it's very simple. And the mechanic that it's depending on is A, the pulse shortening that is uh, displayed right here. And then... He's using uh, the redstone length, or maximum redstone uh, travel distance of 15 blocks to drop the bookcases. So each one is one closer, which means that it's going to drop another bookcase. Now, or bookshelf. Now, this is fine, but there are some issues with this design. For one, it doesn't, uh, because it's requiring such a short pulse length, it means it is prone to failure on multiplayer servers, i.e. if there is lag where the pistons aren't acting quite the way that they uh, are supposed to, you can get some inconsistencies uh, with its output, which isn't a big deal because you can go to reset it, but it is kind of an annoyance. Also, the uh, buttons for the controls are not in the room. They have to be in a hallway or something like that. And, you know, they are kind of bulky, but anytime you're going to have multiple selectors like this, that's kind of how this works. That's why I didn't go with that in my system. I don't like having, like, 15 buttons uh, thrown out across the, you know, my base. So uh, I was trying to do something with just one button. But that's a personal choice, and so I can't really criticize them for that. The other issue is, let's say you decide that you want to drop one bookcase, and then you say, oh, wait a minute, no, I, I just want to do a different enchantment, and I'm going to drop two bookcases. Well, you have to reset it each time. It's not a big deal, but again, it's an annoyance. The other problem with this is that it is, uh, you do have to keep it within exactly 15 blocks of the control panel. The control panel can't be in the room, as I said before. And there are some other limitations to the system just due to its simplicity. Now, so obviously the system that I came up with initially is much more advanced. And it's, uh, and I don't mean advanced, I mean it's just a lot more redstone. Because uh, I'm not trying to slight John here. I'm not trying to say, oh yeah, I'm so much better than you are. Although in a way I am, but we'll get to that. Um, basically, I don't mean for this to be mean-spirited. I just thought, saw this as a personal challenge, and so I decided to try to outdo him um, at his own game. 
And so I came up with a new system that I'm going to show you in a second that I think is a little bit better than this one. And it is a little bit more difficult to build, but I think it's overall a better design. So uh, I'm going to switch worlds and I'll be back in a second to show you what I've come up with. All right, and we are back, and this is my new enchanting room design that's uh, been simplified and that we're going to be doing a tutorial on today. And basically, very much like uh, like uh, John's uh, design, it does allow you to do individual selections, and there's another guy, uh, H. Fog or Fog, that did a similar type of design. Um, but you can select, like, one bookshelf, or, but instead of now, like, let's say you decided you changed your mind, you want to do a higher level enchantment. You can just press on the next button, or a uh, next pressure plate, and you can get whatever, you know, uh, whatever bookcases you need without having to reset. The resets here are in the corner. And it is, uh, it does go in order around the room, so like to get a level 30 enchantment, there you go. You just step on that one, and you get a level 30 enchantment. And then we reset. Oops. There we go. And it uh, it allows you to select how many ever you want. And one thing I do like about it is it allows for a very clean room design. Because uh, I know with Fog's design, and also with uh, the one developed by John, it, they do tend to lead to very claustrophobic spaces, because there's wiring all around the top. And also, I know with Fogs, uh, one thing I don't like with his is that you have the buttons. Uh, there's a bookcase like up here, and it drops down, like right there. And there's a button behind it. So if you change your mind, it's you have to back out. You can't just hit the the button behind it or something like that. Uh, not that that's a big deal, but you know it is one of those things where each design has its own advantages. Uh, with this one, I also like that it's very fast. You know, as you can see, the response time is very nice, and there's not a lot of lag. And the other nice thing about it, as you can look below here, is while this may look kind of bulky, it's very compact, and it does allow area in the center if you want to do something decorative underneath, uh, like you said, saw that I did with the lava. And it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty easy design to uh, work with. So... I'm going to uh, get all my wool together and we're going to start building this thing and then we're going to compare or see how it works and uh, you know just basically uh, go through a little bit of an explanation of the system that I've developed. Overall I, I have to say I'm pretty happy with this how this came out. It's very simple, it's not cluttered and it does give you enough room for uh, to put chests in there if you want to you know put different crafting items for that you might be using for the enchantments and so forth and so on but before we get to that real quickly let me also go through and I'm going to try to do, give you an idea of what you're going to need for this project if you are building it for example in a survival world so you're going to need 65 rep uh, repeaters around that um, you know just a little bit over a stack basically about 45 torches 130 or uh, basically three stacks of redstone uh 15 pistons obviously 15 bookshelves and 17 pressure plates now you could uh go for less than that if you want to obviously just do one reset button unfortunately i am a slave to um symmetrical design so for me it was like yeah i want to have two reset plates uh since i can't put it in the center but Alrighty, I am going to go do that. I will be back in a second and we'll start the tutorial. Alright, I am back and we're ready to get started. Uh, we're going to start off by building this lower portion here, which is our base. I don't believe I mentioned it before, but the total uh, space that's required for this design is about 20 blocks wide, 13 blocks wide, and it has to be about 8 blocks deep. So, not a huge amount of space, but definitely something to consider before you start the project. So, we're going to start by, like I said, with this uh, base here. And one thing I will mention, you may want to have uh, some levers on you because they, it is very helpful for testing out uh, this build as you go through. Because you want it does depend on the, uh, the redstone length. Um, 
of 15 uh, blocks or maximum redstone length of 15 blocks to operate so it is kind of important that you get uh, all of these in the correct place so let's start uh, we'll move over here a little bit and we're going to start by putting our first blocks and we're going to build our platform so we're going to go five across there we go one one ah come on select the right one two three four five okay and it's going to be a five by five square all right and we're going to do one more i swear just having any issues today and then we're going to go in one and over one so one block over like this and that's what it should look like it should these edges should line up and let's go ahead and put that there and once again we're going to do the same uh, five block base. All right, so now that we have that done, in the center of this of uh, these blocks, we're going to run a center channel that we're going to put uh, redstone torches on. So just like that. And now let's go ahead and put our redstone torches on top of here. And then we're going to go ahead and lay down our first uh, set of repeaters. And this is uh, basically what we're building here is an RS nor latch. And so we're going to do this little zigzag pattern that if you've watched my counter video, you'll have seen before where we're going to do one on the edge, two and back and forth like that. There we go. All right, now we're going to put uh, repeaters on the other side. And behind these ones that we have uh, two repeaters in a row, we're just going to do that. And we're going to end up with a little staircase going on. Now you could fill in this area in the center if you really wanted to. It doesn't matter. It, I just like that it's a little bit cleaner if you just do it like this. Now we're going to put some redstone dust on top. And everywhere where we only have one repeater, we're going to uh, do that. All right. And those are our bases. They And they are done. So not too much to that. Now... Uh, let's go ahead and start in this next part. So we're going to lane, uh, line some uh, blocks behind here. And then we're going to put some blocks here. And we're going to make these L shapes here around the repeaters. Alrighty. Now uh, we're going to put some more of these round wool blocks on top of here and on the front just like that all right so now that we have that done we're going to go ahead and everywhere we have redstone dust on the edge we're just going to throw a torch and then we're going to smack a chicken bye mr chicken oops there we go. And up here, wherever we don't have a torch, we're going to put a, uh, another stair step block. Just like that. All right. And now on the stair step blocks, we're just going to throw another torch. Just like that. So by the time you're done, all of these uh, redstone repeaters should be lit up. Now... We're going to take some redstone dust, and everywhere that we have just a uh, torch, we're going to put redstone dust above it. Just like that. And then we're going to put a repeater on the other side. Now, uh, just so you know, we will not be using any delays in the system. So that is kind of a nice thing about how this works. So now just throw down some more redstone repeaters on the other side. Great stuff. And then we're going to put, go ahead and put some redstone dust right there. Alrighty. 
Now on top of that, we're going to go ahead and put another row of blocks. And by the way, just so you know, we this is a RS Norlatch based design. Obviously those seem to be my favorite. So yeah, that's what we're using here. Alrighty, and now some more redstone dust up here. There we go. Very simple, very easy. And now on this uh, block that we just put on top of the torches, we're going to go ahead and put another set of torches. There we go. Alrighty. Whoops. And now let's go ahead and put some. Uh, let me double check this design real quickly. Yeah. So we're going to put another set of blocks here. And another set of blocks there. Alrighty. And this is where the power for our pistons is going to come from. We're just going to route it through right through here. So let's continue putting down these blocks and we'll go ahead and start laying our uh, down our pistons in a second and you're going to start to see this thing come uh, come into shape all right and now we're going to go ahead and do this now on the end here do not put a block uh, this we're going to run power uh, power into these blocks and so we need to uh, but for these end pistons they're actually going to be in the front as opposed to on the side so we need a little bit more room to work so Let's continue to put our blocks here, and alrighty. Now, for these, we're going to put uh, redstone dust every other one. So it should be, you know, a total of three pieces of redstone dust, and then between those, once again, we're going to put uh, some repeaters. So just like that. Good stuff. And now. Uh, you can go ahead and use some whatever spare block you have. I'm just going to use this and we're going to make the shape of our uh... There we go Of our piston ring now you do not want to leave these here because these torches would set them off if these blocks were still there, but we want to go ahead and it just makes it easier to put down our pistons so we're going to have one two three four there or five yeah that is right right nope that is not right because the other piston is going to go right there all right <laughs> i was like i can count right all right, so there's uh, we're going to have four on this row, and then our fifth piston is going to be right here. So you're going to end up with a C-looking uh, shape. So there we go. Alrighty, and now we're going to go ahead and take out everything but these blocks on the edge. So we're going to go ahead and kill all these blocks here. And now, for these blocks on the edge, we're actually going to put a block right next to them. And then we're going to put a repeater here so that it doesn't pick up power from this block. It doesn't matter on this side, but on this side it does matter. Because uh, this will be the, uh, the piston for the 30th, or for the 15th bookcase. So we want to make sure it does not get activated by the, uh, by the 14th bookcase when it's extended. All right, so there we go. We have all 15 bookcases. And there you go. So now you can start to see this thing taking shape. And see, it's not really all that difficult. All right. So now that we have that done, let us go ahead and uh, start connecting these two. Or these uh, three different uh, sets of RS Nor latches. We're going to go ahead and run channels here for power to go through. And we're going to do the same up here. And there we go. And you should see something that looks kind of like this, you know, U, a U shape or a C shape, whatever, right there. 
It's kind of pretty to look at, actually. Uh, I really like how this design came out. So, now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and we can start... Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and start uh, running our uh, pressure plates. So, with this design, it is not completely... Uh, so well, it's symmetrical, but not all the sides are the same. These ones at the back are going to be a little bit different. And the reason for that is to uh, maintain uh, uniformity between the, uh, the, the, where the pressure plates are and where the bookshelves are. We have to do that. Now, if you don't care about that, you could uh, move the bookcases back one. Or uh, not the bookcases, <laughs> the uh, pressure plates back one to right here. And then you could uh, you could make these exactly the same, but I prefer to have the uniform look and uh, the consistent block uh, distance between the two, and so that's what we're going to do. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to lay this platform up top. So we're going to go back three, and with these on the end, uh, we're going to have to come out one because we. Uh, we kind of I don't like how it looks if it were uh, if we're like this uh, I want the pressure plates to be lined up with the bookcases themselves so we're going to be doing uh, doing it that way for this so go ahead and we're going to finish this out fill in this area and then we can go ahead and start putting down our uh, pressure plates All right, so this is where our pressure plates are going to go. We're going to go ahead and put them one above this uh, this brown layer here. And again, we're going to have five blocks wide. So everything should pretty much be five blocks wide. So it should make it pretty easy uh, to measure out. Alrighty. And now for this one, like I said, this one's a little bit different. We're going to uh, put another layer here, and that's going to actually be what our redstone goes on. So let's go ahead and put put our, down our pressure plates, just like that. Alrighty, there we go. And by the way, just so you know, these are going to be uh, these. This upper layer is going to be what. Uh, oh can't do it that way um, now we need a block uh, we need blocks here anyways so we can go ahead and run this along the back um, and basically this is going to keep this is our reset line uh, the upper one is the reset line and the uh, lower one is the input line so we're going to go ahead and fill those in and I'll show you in a second uh, how the reset works so let's go ahead and do that alrighty and now you can see when we apply power it uh, resets the RS nor latch and this is what's going to allow us to do the reset but on these I'm going to have to actually pop them up first see I told you having these uh, levers around is very useful and there we go so now that we have that in place, let's go ahead and start running down our uh, the power for the input. And this is going to uh, come down here. We're going to go ahead and run the redstone dust underneath this. And again, this is very important. You've got to be very careful with this because it is going to make, uh, because it's exactly uh, 15 blocks you've got to be very careful so like with this redstone you want it all the way to the edge and then you're going to come out three or well two I guess and then uh, you're going to go in one and then down so because we need exactly a length of 15 now if you screw it up it's not a big deal because you're going to uh, be able to uh, when we use our uh, Let's see, and our redstone's going to run right along here. Uh, you can use torches to, uh, see, or not torches, uh, levers to see exactly how far the redstone is going to run. But, you know, obviously it's easier if you don't um, have to make a lot of changes. 
afterwards. So, all right, there we go. And we can go ahead and test this out. And the, the one that's important is going to be the first one um, because that's going to determine the rest of them. And we can see the power ends right there. And this is powered. And look, the first piston is raised. So good stuff. All right, now let's go ahead and do this one. Again, this one's a little bit different, but again, we're gonna come off on uh, this and then come down one and then uh, go ahead and make our way down with our uh, redstone just using this little uh, stair tap stepping technique. And then we're gonna go in right there. All right, and again, we'll check it. Did I do this backwards? Oh, uh, let's see. What did I screw up? Oh, we're gonna come off one. That's what we're gonna do. In fact, you could just leave this thing powered while you're doing this, and you could uh, then see as you're laying it down exactly how far your redstone's going to go. So let's see. And there we go. Um, well, to test this one, we will have to reset it just as before. All right, and then throw this on the end. All right, and we get one. So that's perfect. And with this one, it's the same thing. Uh, by the way, make sh always make sure uh, that you're, however you run this, because you can run it left to right, right to left, but you want to make sure that the uh, one power or the, uh, the power for the uh, first uh, pressure plate is always reaching on the same side, because otherwise it'll be a little bit inconsistent with uh, how things uh, work depending on the side that you're on so let's see there we go and again just like that nice and simple and easy and let's do one block again and oh we are off by one where did I screw up oh this one comes off one two that's where I messed up All right again you have a little bit of latitude with this just you know or did I not line that up properly? Let's see. Yep, that's the issue right there. Again, we want to make sure that our uh, pressure plates are lined up with this edge right here. Because again, you move these all, all these pressure plates and it throws off all the other values. Uh, for the rest of the device so that's why it's so important that you get them uh, get things lined up properly because otherwise you're going to be like why isn't it working and it's just you're off by one thing just right there and see I do it too so it's definitely not the only one so all right let's go ahead and where can we put in power here uh, right there All right, and now for our number one pressure plate. There we go. So now all of these pressure plates are working. So see, that wasn't too bad. And now all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run the lines for the reset. So we need to extend this out to the edge, just like that. And just like that. And now we're going to put a repeater going into these uh, ones on the side. So repeater there. And basically, this is going to power through the block, and it's going to uh, uh, 
allow us to run this uh, very easily. All right, let's go. And we're going to need a, another repeater there. And one there. And to make sure that your reset switches get uh, get placed exactly where you want them so that they're uh, nice and even with all the other uh, pressure plates, go ahead and run it out just like that. Yeah, I got that. And then that way you'll make sure that everything is even because I've misplaced these things a couple of times this morning. Alrighty. Oh, and I need a fifth pressure plate because I moved that back. Alright, and there we go. And just like that, we're going to come in on that. And the rain stops, finally. And on this one, we want to make sure we put a block here. That way we don't end up with a, uh, a never-ending circuit. So, there we go. There we go. And once again, let's try check out our pressure plates. Or our uh, resets. Alright, that works. So, and, oh, need to run redstone here. There we go. So everything there works very nicely. And here is the last thing. So. Now. Now. Because of how this is ordered, now obviously if you decide to go in a different order than what I'm doing, you're going to have to re rearrange the uh, direction of these uh, repeaters. But, so this one would be like the one, uh, the one for one bookshelf or level two enchantments. And so we need the power to go around. Uh, so that if we select like this one here, so we would have ten bookshelves, so that would make a level twenty enchantment. We need to go and we need to put a repeater there so that that will work. And this also keeps uh, the uh, signal from reaching uh, one further down. So like we wouldn't click on the 21 and then get like uh, this piston here. And right there you can see it working. Let's uh, jump on the reset. All right. And I always just go on the fifth one of all of them. There we go, we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, so we have a total of 10, yay. Oh, I missed on that one. Let's go ahead and just put a block here. Good stuff. All right, there. We get five there, good, and for the last one, here we go. Step on that, and we have our level 30 enchantment. So that's all there is to it. All right, so I discovered after I uh, was trying to edit the video for this tutorial that the last portion, for whatever reason, uh, fraps had messed up. So I'm having to re record it real quickly. Um, basically, uh, that's all I have to show today <clears throat> as I get a frog in my throat and just nothing is working properly. But uh, that's all I have to show today, but what I did want you guys to do is, if you have the time, uh, go look at uh, uh, John's design, or go look at the uh, design by H. Fogg, and, you know, let us know which one you like better. Uh, leave comments, you know, just don't, you know, obviously don't be an ass about it. This is a friendly competition. We're just trying to see who has the best design and as just like on top gear when they're trying to like determine who has the best car we all have our own opinions about this and so what we would like is for you to watch our videos and let us know which one you like the best so uh, if I will put links in the uh, area below 
for you to view that and uh, for you to see all three of our designs and all three of our tutorials and just let us know in the comments which one you like. So once again, this is Andrew M. Price wishing you a good day and saying good day and good gaming. Bye. easy to get access to so if you need to adjust something or something like that it should work and like I said unlike with uh, John's it doesn't require uh, a one pulse uh, tick so if you are playing on a multiplayer server this is probably going to be a much better design because it's going to be much more resilient to lag uh, not to mention there are some other benefits to this design uh, that I've previously covered but you know, maybe you think John's is better. I'm curious. So, you know, if you think it is, uh, watch this video. I'm going to put a link in the, uh, you know, area below. So if you think his better is better, let me know. Or if you uh, think mine is better, let him know. I, really, I just see this as a friendly competition between people that enjoy playing Minecraft and, you know, enjoy doing Redstone. And so that was really the purpose of this video is just to show off uh, this design that I came up with, which is, I think, pretty
pretty clean and uh you know i'm pretty happy with but you know a lot obviously like i said there are a lot of people out there with different designs but i just wanted to go ahead and show off this one in case anyone else wanted to try it or uh you know just to i guess see uh john and i battle it out with the uh, redstone so once again this is andrew and price thanking you for watching this video for checking out my channel and i will catch you guys later so have a good Sunday and good day and good gaming. Bye.